morning guys so it is sunday november 24th it is currently 8 50 um i don't have my glasses on so i had to squint just to look at the time but getting ready to head out to go to my brother's first church and then from there we're gonna go to the church that i have to speak at and then we're going to my church so um yeah i'm ready to go um the next clip you will see will be me going up to speak hopefully i can record get the whole thing recorded but um yeah y'all are coming along with me and watching my journey <laughs> but um where's my ring here it is put my ring on but yeah so i'll catch you ladies at three o'clock i'm looking at the night over for kids so, Hannah's name means the favorite, and she was the most favorite by of his two. She was unable to have children, so she was barren. She struggled with her emotions, and she was constantly provoked because of her failure as a wife. In dealing with her opposition, she handled her problems through prayer alone. She knew she could not deal with her issues or her circumstances on her own, so she needed the Creator to step in and make the impossible possible. Hannah teaches us that not only God, excuse me, Hannah teaches us that only God can fix the things that we have no control over. Amen. Be it at work, at school, at home, if you're outside in the middle of the street, if you're on the bus. There are going to be things that we face that seem impossible that we need to take a minute and to pray to the soul creator, the sustainer, and our way of everything. Amen. Concerning prayer, we can learn five things from Hannah that will lead to experiencing the joy of prayer. The first thing is to seek God in every circumstance. When things are tough, even when they're not, you are to seek God alone. Hannah was provoked constantly. She may have felt worthless, useless as a wife. She couldn't bear her husband any children. And back then, children were very important, especially having sons. So Hannah basically had three choices. The first one was to allow her emotions to control her and to be at, to being provoked by Hannah. The second one was to shut down and close herself off. Or the third, which is basically to go to the only person that can fix her problems, which well. is God. She chose the better answer of going to the source. Amen. Now, I know in my personal experience, I always shut down. I didn't really go to God in prayer. I didn't communicate to God in prayer. And I know as youth, we tend to, I'm saying we, I still consider myself youth, but we still, um, we, we try to shut down because we don't want to tell our friends, we don't want to tell our family members, and last of all, we, want, we don't really want to pray to God. So, when in doubt of anything, seek God for the answer. When assured, still seek God. No matter what's going on, we are given the directive to seek God. Jesus tells us so in Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. We do not need to be preoccupied with the things of this world, especially those things that seem impossible. Our ambition, our focus, our hearts, our minds, they should be on God alone. In doing so, he will respond to our prayers as he did with him. Hannah cried out and sought only to please him in verse 11 when she prayed for a child. If you're having difficulty in school, if you're dealing with peer pressure, if you're unhappy with a friendship, if you're struggling at home, because I know that's a lot of the time the problem with you, they have peer pressure at school, they have, they're have they stuck in friendships that they feel like they can't get out of. Mm -hmm. And even with adults, we have the same situations. I encourage you to do just like can and seek God. She sought him continually, as First Chronicles 16 11 says, and in doing so, you will experience the joy of prayer. Cool. The second thing is to remain humble before God. If you go further back in chapter 1 to verse 11, 16, and 18, you see that Hannah refers to herself as a maid servant five times. In doing so, she exemplifies both humility and dependence on God. A maid servant back then was considered a female slave. Mm -hmm. So Hannah basically acknowledged that she didn't belong to herself. She acknowledged that she belonged to God. She recognized that she was not of her own, but that she was God, God's creation. Being humble is something that God requires of us. He blesses the humble and despises the proud, according to James 4 and 6 and 1 Peter 5 and 5. God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. We are to live in humility with others, but even in prayer we are going to the Father. We need to remain humble. 1 Peter 5 and 6 tells us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. 
when we go before him in prayer, we are not to demand or bargain anything. He is mighty and knows what we need of before we ask it of him. Matthew 6 and 8 tells us. It says, therefore, do not be like him, for your father knows the things you need of before you ask him. When you go before God, always keep in mind that we are not going to him like Aladdin, thinking he's a genie. God is not a genie for us. We don't seek him to boast about our greatness, nor do we try to get him to give us our desires. God is the creator. He is the master. We are his people. We petition and make supplication, but we never demand anything of him. James 4 and 10 says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. You can experience the joy of prayer by remaining humble in prayer before God like Hannah did. When he, then he'll come to you like he did for Hannah and exalt you. The third thing is to depend on God and not yourself. And I know for me, when I was in high school, middle school, even in college, when I dealt with something, I didn't go to God. I normally went to a friend or I relied on myself. And that's not something that Hannah did. She had every right to do so because of what she was dealing with, but she chose to depend on God. She didn't rely on her husband who loved her above all else. She didn't rely on the priest for answers. She didn't rely on her own mind for answers. She depended on God alone for the answer to her situation. In her hurt and anger and bitterness, she wept and prayed. As youth, we have a tendency to rely on our parents. We ask them to pray for us. We rely on our friends. We ask them you know, how we can get out of the situation. We rely on social media nowadays because it's everywhere. And we even rely on ourselves when we're going through. However, God doesn't want us to do that. He wants our attention on him alone. Relying on others may bring temporary comfort, but in the end, it will leave you feeling empty. God, however, is our refuge, shelter, rock, and foundation. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, To trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. We cannot support ourselves in certain situations and with certain circumstances. Things will arise that we cannot handle, and we will seek out others to depend on. However, we are to depend on God alone. <laughs> Verse 6 in Proverbs 3 tells us to acknowledge the Father, and in doing so, he will direct us. To depend on God, you must build a relationship with him, and you do that through prayer and studying his word. 1 Peter 5 and 7 tells us to throw all our cares to God because he cares for us. Mm -hmm. Whatever you are dealing with at home, school, or work, it all can be given to God, even if it seems impossible. He is the God of the impossible. All you need to do is seek him out in prayer, be humble before him in prayer, and depend on him. Experience the joy of prayer by depending on the one who created you and called you son or daughter. The fourth thing that Hannah did was she had faith. Hannah was a woman in an impossible situation. She was barren, she was the first most loved wife, but she could not produce a son for her husband. So she had enough faith to pray to the father for a child that she could not conceive. She believed that God alone could give her that child and trusted that it would be a son because she specifically mm -hmm. made a vow for a son and not just for her little child. She believed in what she asked for, as Jesus tells us in Matthew 21 and 22. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, mm -hmm. you will receive. Mm -hmm. Faith is essential to our prayer lives. Without faith, we cannot move in our lives. Right. If we do not believe that he can give us the grades in school, great friends, or peace at home, then he won't do it. When I was in high school, I dealt and struggled with history. History was not my favorite subject at all. It still is not my favorite. <laughs> but one thing that I started to do during those times was pray to God and ask him to help me understand history and I went from getting a D to a B. Now that doesn't mean that you can pray and ask God, hey God help me out with this math class and he's automatically going to give you an A plus. It doesn't work that way. There's still some work that you're going to have to do. Amen. Amen. You can pray to him and ask him to help you with that and when you do and believe that he'll do it, then you, you'll start to see that happen. Amen. So James 1 and 6 says that we are to ask in faith without doubting. Hannah was confident in God and his ability to do the impossible things. She didn't doubt him, but rather she prayed, released, and trusted him to do what he knew, what she knew he could do. Hebrews 11 and 6 goes back to our first point of seeking God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
When you go before God in prayer with a humble heart, you must believe in what you're asking him to do. You must believe that he will do it, not because you asked, but because he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because he is the I am, because he is a yes. faithful, loving, and true yes. father to us. Preach. Experience the joy of prayer when you activate your faith. The fifth and final thing that Hannah teaches us is to remain faithful and committed. Coming back to the theme of verses 27 and 28, we see that Hannah is faithful to the end and the vow that she made to God back in verse 11 for her child. She dedicated back to God what he gave unto her. Mm -hmm. Her son was a gift that should have been impossible as she was barren. God placed her, excuse me, God blessed her because she sought him and was humble before him, depended on him alone and had faith in him. In that, he gave her the desire of her heart and she did not forget what she vowed to him. In prayer, we put things before God and make vows and promises and pleas. However, sometimes when he answers those prayers, we tend to fall off and forget our end of the bargain. Mm -hmm. We accept his blessings, but we don't remain faithful. Mm -hmm. Going back to college, I used to pray to God and ask him to help me with certain grades in life. If I did this, I'll study your word. Um, Lord, if you help me with this, then I'll go to church more. But I wasn't keeping my end of the bargain. And a lot of the times, you tend to do that. They'll make a promise. Even as adults, we do it. We'll pray. We'll say something in prayer to God and be like, you know, Lord, if you help me get this car, I'll make sure that I'll be a blessing to the people within the ministry. If you help me get this job, I'll be a blessing to the ministry. But when you get the car, when you get the job, when you get the grade, you go about your life as normal. Well. You forget it. If you pray for good grades, but promise him that you will study your word, do it. If you pray for rest, but promise him that you will end a bad friendship, do it. Answered prayers are a blessing, but the real blessing comes when you remain faithful and committed to him through your words. Experience the joy of prayer when you stay faithful to the God who is faithful. Today, I pray that you take heed to the example Hannah has set and apply it to your life. Experience the joy of prayer by seeking God, staying humble, depending solely on him, not yourself, not your friends, not your father, not your leaders in your church, because even though we have leaders within the ministry, we're still supposed to go back home and read God word for ourselves and pray, even as youth. I never did that. It took me a long time to get to where I am, so I'm definitely encouraging you as youth. Go home and pray for yourself. Your parents can pray for you, but do it for yourself. Read your word daily. It doesn't have to be an hour long. It doesn't even have to be 10 minutes. Five minutes is all you need. When you're in prayer, be humble. Don't demand anything of the Father. There's nothing that you can ask him for that he doesn't already know that you need. And make sure it's a need and not just an excessive want. Because a lot of us have things that we want but really don't need. Having faith and remaining faithful and committed to what you promised him. If you make a vow to God like Hannah, stick to it. Don't break it. Because once you work that vow, God can then go back. He's not a God that does, but he has all power to do so. Um, just want to take this time to say thank you for having me. This is my first out of ministry speaking engagement. Amen. It took me a while to come up with what I was going to say because this is a uh, a word that I would normally use for adults. Um, Use a car, use a car, use a car. 
Jesus, God. Thank you, Father. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And when he brings you out, he wants you to get life help from Yes. Glory. So while you're in school, be it high school, middle school, college, wherever you are, lead to the adults in your workplace. Make sure that you're a light to someone else. Even if it's just a hug, saying good morning. If you're in school helping somebody study, it means a lot to some people. Amen.